I unmounted that frozen control from the front of the chassis and pried up this little tab on the back and then was able to pop the metal back off of the control and was somewhat surprised to see that it's a wire wound control because this is for the brightness which just drives the catheter to the CRT so very little current coming off of this center tap but it does form part of a resistor divider and uh, off the 400 volts on one end and ground on the other so you got a fixed resistor brightness control and a fixed resistor and I'm guessing for stability they wanted to pass a sizable amount of current through those resistors now what's also interesting is the construction of this so around the outside there's an insulating strip with many 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 turns of fine resistive wire which is typical of a wire wound control but what's not typical is the way the wiper makes contact usually it's some type of conductive pad like carbon that rubs up against the wire and travels around in this case there's a piece of spring steel I think in a hoop going all around the inside forms a full circle and goes to this lug and for the wiper there's a curved arm with a little piece of looks looks like some type of wood that presses up against that hoop and distorts it so it makes contact wherever that little piece of material is pressing up against it what that means is there's no friction against the fine wires the friction is just on this hoop against that piece of wood which means that uh, these should last a very very long time because a typical failure mode of wire wound controls is that the wire breaks on the outside either from too much current flowing through it or from too much friction alright as you can see I've unseized this I shot some aero crawl penetrating oil down here at first which didn't do me any good really I had to get some down in here there's grease down in there that had just frozen up solid. There's a little bit of it. So whatever this is had, had frozen, had dried out, and that's what was seizing up the control. So after the penetrating oil did its thing, I put some light uh, machine oil, like clocks, in there. And it's still a little stiff, but plenty good enough. So I'll be remounting that now after I seal the can back up. Now I'm focusing on this high voltage board in more detail. I've already restuffed both of the high voltage vertical deflection plate coupling caps and the one cap that was mounted on the back side. They're ready to be reinstalled. But before I do that, I wanted to check these resistors and I found some problems. Some appear to be way off, and one even appears to be open. So those have got to be replaced, or this won't function right. Now, that wouldn't be a problem, except that I can't get this board out. I've um, taken out all the screws that attach to these insulating standoffs, but no matter how I twist it, it won't come out because this is in the way. So I fear I'm going to have to take that out. Or maybe, maybe. Yeah, it seems like if I could just get this around this, I could probably twist it around. So, either disconnect these wires so I can pull it out further, or maybe just undo this standoff from the top and then I can twist this whole thing this way. So I want to get this around so I can get at these components more readily. I took some reference photos unscrewed some of those standoffs, unsoldered some wires, and I was finally able to completely swing the board around without having to take that transformer out. Now I can really get in there and test these resistors. So I'm starting at this end. Should be 3.9 meg, 3.84. That's fine. Go to the next one. Should also be 3.9. Not bad. Now let's swing over to these 4.7s. These are the ones that really tested strange. 
Yeah, that's way, way too high, about double what it should be. About 9.5 meg, should be 4.7, and this is the one I think I was measuring open. Yep. I don't think I've seen that before, but once you get into high voltage, strange things can happen to these resistors. Although, really, when you break this all down, there isn't that much voltage across any individual resistor. Here's how they are connected up. So they form a giant voltage divider. They don't specify the voltage rating uh, right off of that, but uh, shouldn't be too high because the capacitors they use for like the vertical coupling are only rated for 5,000 volts. So let's just guesstimate it's around 6,000 volts max. And if you do all the math, uh, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it later, I'll show you all the resistor values and how much voltage and current there is across each one. Now, continuing on, got a couple, should be 3.3, 3.4, it's fine, 3.6, that's fine. Now, this guy should be 1 meg. Rather high, well, about 33% high. To go replace that. Now, a couple 2.7s. Oops. A little high, 3.4, but not too bad. Two, that's a bit on the low side, so I think I might just replace both of those if I've got replacements on hand. Now we got oh, there's a bunch of 2.7s, a bunch more 2.7s. Way high, 4.6. Also a bit high, 3.3. Now all these are pretty critical to the operation because this determines all the operating potentials on the cathode ray tube, both the, the uh, anode potential, or rather it's actually by, well they call them, they want to think of them as grids or anodes, I think they label them as G1, G2, and G3, something like that, and the deflection plates. They all have to be biased properly to get a good focus and a good sharp picture. 3.3, a little high, and finally another 2.7. Yeah, this one's actually within tolerance. Alright, so what to replace them with? Well, again, I have that stash of new old stock resistors, so I can go through these. have not tested any of them yet. I think I only found one pack of 4.7s, and those are the two that are the worst. So definitely got to replace those. And let's see, okay, I got one pack of 2.7s, another pack of 2.7s, so that's good. And here's the 4.7s, and 3.9, yeah, I got some of those too, so I'll have to test all those. Now, if all these are bad too, I do have a fallback option, which is to use modern ones. Now, these just aren't any old resistors. These are actually high voltage resistors. They're rated for uh, 3.7 thousand volts. Picked up a few of these a while back. I figured I would need them someday for some of these electrostatic sets. So if I do need to replace any, I will go with these. Got a whole bunch of 4.7 megs here. Got these from Mauser Electronics. I think they're made by Vichy. What's the part number there? HVR 37000470470. Well, I'm going to wait for half a watt, and these are all 2 watts, but I'll go through and do the math and show you that there isn't actually that much power being dissipated by these. They use 2 watts because they can handle more voltage across them, just as these can, even though they're only half a watt. Alright, let's analyze this high voltage divider. Here it is on the schematic with the high voltage power supply inside the dashed lines. At 12 AU7, with the two sections paralleled forms an oscillator that drives the primary secondary gets rectified by a high voltage rectifier tube goes through a pi filter and then here's our divider now they don't state the voltage coming out of that high voltage supply 
but they do state the voltages on the 7JP4 CRT and the highest one is 4100 volts. Also those high voltage coupling capacitors that drive the deflection plates are only rated for 5000 volts. So I'm going to say conservatively we got about 4500 volts coming right in here. Now I took this schematic and wrote it out larger and printed the component values but then I realized that this doesn't quite match what I have. Mine does not have these two 1.8 meg resistors. They just aren't there. So I made another version that does match what I have. So here's all those resistors in series. Now this top section is a little bit confusing because they've got two in series in parallel with the two centering controls, vertical and horizontal centering controls. So I added these two in series and then put them with these two in parallel. So this all reduces to an equivalent 1.7 meg resistor. That in series with all the others adds up to 30.5 mega ohms. So 4,500 volts across 30.5 mega ohms results in 0.00015 amps or 150 microamps. Now if I know that, I can use Ohm's law to find out the voltage drop across each individual resistor. It's current times resistance. So that much current times that much resistance will give me 705 volts for the largest voltage drop. It's the largest resistance in there, 4.7 meg. So 4.7 meg has about 700 volts across it. Now typically a 2 watt resistor is rated for 750 volts. So they were kind of pushing things, which could be why these two resistors failed. One is open, the other is double the value it should be. Now as for the power they dissipate, well that's current square times R. So that current square times 4.7 meg is only 0.1 watts, and the rest of the resistors will dissipate even less. So they're nowhere near 2 watts. They just use these large resistors because they can handle more voltage. A typical half watt resistor can only handle around 350 or less volts. However, I do have modern ones that can handle 3.7 thousand, so I could use those. However, since I've got the new old stock 2 watts on hand, I'm going to try replacing them. I'm just going to replace the ones that are the that are really out of tolerance of so these two and I think a, a few of the others and uh, try it in the circuit and see how it works out. Here's the high voltage board after repairs. I ended up replacing just the worst of the resistors. So I got two new 4.7s, a new 1.0, and a new 2.7. And I've installed the rebuild high voltage vertical coupling caps. I've got my ohmmeter hooked from one end of the divider to the other, and I'm getting about 32 meg. I think my meter is struggling a little because this is really at the upper end of what it's capable of measuring. So we got continuity, it's measuring about what it should, so I think we're good to go with this board.